Hello fellow cinephiles, Film Guru here. Today I'm going to continue on my reviews of the Superman movies. And so today we're reviewing Man of Steel. Now this is directed by Zack Snyder. Now this film stars Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Diane Lane, Kevin Costner, and Russell Crowe. And it's ultimately a retelling of the Superman story. And what it does sort of different is it spends a bit more time on Krypton. We get to see Jarrell doing what he does best. Um, we get to see him in action um, and, and really look at the world that they've created there. And it sort of opens the world on this particular planet. We find out that um, there's a codex in place that there hasn't been any natural births on Krypton in many centuries. That each child that is born is predestined to do some, something in particular. And he's got to do that for the rest of his life. Where, where Drell and his wife end up having a child in natural birth. He's the last of their kind and, and he needs to be sent away in order to survive. That Krypton is coming to an end and will be destroyed. Before all this sort of happens, Zod and his General Zod is involved, um, trying to protect Krypton and its people, um, and he is sort of sent to the Phantom Zone just before the planet explodes. Kal-El is sent to Earth. Um, we don't see all of that transpires like we usually do. It sort of sk skips forward 30 years. On we see Clark Kent trying to work out who he is and where he came from, trying to find any resemblance of um, his parents or his world or where he sort of what planet he is from. He doesn't know a lot as he goes along. Ultimately, he does have his abilities and his powers, but he's doing different things. He's saving people along the way. He's really on a, going on a seeking journey to find out who he truly is and where he fits in, in this world. And he does that through a variety of things. On a ship trawler, where he saves a lot of... Um, there's a fire on oil rig, and he saves the, the men off that and gets them safely out of there. To a variety of other things that he does along the way. Lois Lane gets involved, she meets him in the Antarctic where he finds a ship from his Krypton world and, he, and it helps him to gather who he is and learn what, where he came from and who his parents were. So Lo, Lois Lane, played by Amy Adams, comes into contact with him and she is hurt and he subsequently saves her and then leaves her um, in a safe place and takes the ship and takes off. Ultimately it becomes about Lois Lane trying to work out who this person is, who this man is that saved her life and what this ship was and where it came from and if it is alien or if it is human and <clears throat> she goes about tracking down this particular man the different jobs he's had and the people he's interacted with and helped and what he's done along the way to make life a bit better for people and she subsequently finds him really wants to do a story upon him but then he tells the story that he doesn't want to be involved in it and so she decides to let the story go and subsequently he ends up helping a lot of people but he hasn't become the superman we know all know and love when he finds this ship, he learns about his past, his father Jarrell, or a hologram version of his father, tells the story of Krypton, how there was no natural births anymore, um, and that each child was preordained and predestined to do a particular job. Um, and he also t talks about how there was a variety of scout ships that were sent out throughout the universe to find different life, and this is one of those ships. And upon this is where he finds out who he is, so it ultimately is his um, fortress of solitude in a way. He gets his Superman suit and then he experiments with how to fly. It's the one thing he hasn't tried. And it's kind of interesting to see him do that, break the sound barrier and learn to fly in an effective way. Upon turning on this ship, um, a beacon is sent out and ultimately General Zod um, finds the beacon and ends up coming to Earth and he's calling Superman out, or Clark Kent out. Come out to the world and prove who he is, and, and if he doesn't give himself up to General Zod and, and his soldiers, then he, General Zod is gonna destroy Earth. And then it becomes a race against time of Superman trying to stop Zod, and to ex expose himself to the world, and to see how they accept him, and if they do or don't accept him. And ultimately it's about him trying to stop Zod from destroying the Earth and making another Krypton um, on the deaths of all the other humans in, in the Earth. And then he becomes the Superman we all know and love. Ultimately, I, I really like this. I like the first trailer that came out with the little kid with the, um, the cape on running around the clothesline and then you had Jarrell's voice explaining who he is and stuff like that. And from that point on, I was really fascinated by it. And this was the first sequel they'd done to Superman since Superman Returns. And they sort of did a reinvention with it, you know, it was, like I said, directed by Jack Schneider. Christopher Nolan was heavily involved in producing it. It was written by David S. Goyer, who co-wrote Batman Begins. 
um, and he sort of crafted a really interesting story here, where it's not the conventional s story that we all know of, of Superman. Yes, it does start on Krypton, and yes, he does get sent to Earth like he does in all the other incarnations of S Superman. What's different here is we, we open up with him 30 years old, traveling around trying to find his place in the world. He doesn't really know who he is or where he comes from. He, know he, come, he knows he comes from another planet and he came upon a ship, but he doesn't know anything else. And it's sort of about him learning that along the way. And that was sort of different compared to all the other stuff. And also the fact that Lois Lane knows who he is, which they never did before in all the other TV series and movies. And that's another kind of interesting point there and what they did with that as well. I like the look of it. I think Henry Cavill does a really great job as Superman here and Clark Kent. Um, you sort of believe him and he is a mountain of man and you can believe he is Superman. Like he is strong and powerful um, and capable of doing so much. There's some really great sequences in it where he's traveling around doing different things. There's a particular set piece at the start where he saves a whole heap of men off an oil rig. And just that scene alone where he's trying to hold this sort of crane up is just really, really fantastic. And I think he does a really great job here. Um, and he's sort of a great sort of character you can get behind. I think Amy Adams is pretty solid as Lois Lane. Not my favourite interpretation of Lois Lane, but she does a solid job here. And it's kind of interesting to see her interactions with Henry Cavill and, and Clark Kent and how they sort of work together um, to accomplish particular things. I think Michael Shannon is fantastic as General Zod, a perfect casting there. He's one of my favourite actors. Um, he's very good in this. I find him a very interesting actor. He sort of usually plays bad guys, but he has his ability to act in it's Every performance he gives is surprising in some way. He does something he don't quite expect or takes a character in a way, in a direction you don't expect either, but he's so brilliant at it and he's really great here as General Zod. A man who, you know, is destined to protect Krypton and that's all he knows. He can't do anything else and he wants to recreate Krypton and that's all he can do is work towards that because that's all he's ever known. And he's a soldier and, and he continues to fight no matter what, no matter what. So I think this kind of adds an interesting element to Jarrell. So you sort of understand why he's trying to do what he's trying to do. Lawrence Fishburne, I think, does a really great job here as Perry White. A very strong and interesting character. Um, and it's good to change up who plays that particular character. And I think Lawrence is a great choice in what they're able to accomplish with him. Diane Lane plays Martha Kent. She's fantastic. Um, I'm a big fan of Diane Lane and she does a really great job here and you sort of believe her and you really get behind her as this character trying to look after and support her, her son who's capable of these great things. And as the story goes on you get to see him struggling with does he tell the world who he is? Does he give himself up to Zod? Will that accomplish anything? And there's this really great scene where he's, he doesn't know what to do and he's talking with his mother and she talks about, because he's trying to make a difficult decision, it's very tough for him. And she talks about when he was a little kid that she used to listen to him breathe and how much he struggled to breathe and um, was always sick but due to not being used to the Earth's atmosphere. And she feared for him. But he, he, be, he grew up to a really strong and powerful man. And that sort of shows how really her, what she says there is about strength. It's about how even though it's difficult, you can fight through it and accomplish many things. And I think that's a great sort of thing for Clark Kent and Superman to, to look at. And I think Kevin Costner does a really great job here as well. He's only in a small amount of scenes and mostly flashback scenes. There will be a particular thing that transpires um, and then that'll cause Clark Kent to remember um, things that transpired in his life such as when he's a little kid and when he first gets all, all of his abilities all at once and doesn't know how to deal with it. Um, when he's a bit older in high school and there's a bus crash and he saves everybody on the and he saves everyone on the bus. And people don't know what to make of him, a bit frightened for him. And Kevin Costner's character is sort of this man that doesn't want the world to know who he is because he's scared what will happen to his son and what will transpire with everybody knowing he has these abilities. And will he be taken from Jonathan and Martha Kent and, you, and experimented on or kept in captivity and he, he fears for his son so he tells him to keep him all of his abilities and what he can do secret. And then it also skips forward when he's a bit older probably in his 20s and he's having an argument with his father and this tornado comes and he, Jonathan and him save a lot of people 
And then Jonathan goes back for the particular dog they own and he's ultimately killed. And Superman doesn't, Clark Kent doesn't do anything because his father's always told him not to get involved, not show people his ability, and he sacrifices himself in order to keep his son's secret. Just powerful moments like that. And I think last of all is Russell Crowe, and I think he's really good as Drill here. Um, he does has some really great scenes at the start, some action sequences he gets to do. You see how smart he is and what he's trying to accomplish. And the lengths he goes to in order for his to allow his son to survive and sending him to Earth. And then the great idea of having this ship and having a um, hologram version of him um, on that ship. And I think that's fantastic because he gets to learn more about who he is through interacting with an actual person. The visuals are really good in this. It isn't a perfect film, but I really like what they've done with the Superman story. The only criticism I would have with it is the fight sequence and is quite big and it destroys pretty much all the metropolis and I just felt that was a bit too much. It reminded me of the Matrix a little too much. And I know we've got two alien guys fighting each other with abilities, so of course there's going to be a lot of destruction, but I just felt there was a bit too much of it. I did like all the stuff that happened in Smallville, the fights within there, what transpires there, the gun fights, the physical fights, um, his interaction with Jarrell and his soldiers and, and sort of what that involves and how the government still looks at him a threat to them because he's an alien with these abilities that he's never came out and told them who he is before. And they really look at the S on his chest as a thing, you know, represents hope. In all the other things, it's the, it's all, all the other things it represents the House of El, you know, Kal-El and Jarell and the family that he does come from. I think there's a lot of heart to this character. Um, and he's very interesting to watch and him trying to work everything out and then when he finally gets his abilities, how that transpires and what he's able to accomplish with those things. The people he's able to help. The life he starts living, he gets a job at, at the Daily Planet as a reporter, which I think is really great. And so they will tie all this into um, creating a new world and, and this is the first film in the DC universe, um, which subsequently went on to do four other movies as well and there's some others coming. And it really looks at the idea of Superman being hope, being something that is bigger than himself, is able to do these great things, is someone that people will look up to and follow. They may fall and not get close to him, but they will continue to try. And it gives people hope. It gives people this ability to accomplish things themselves and to know that there's someone out there that can help them and save them when they need. And it's the only film besides Wonder Woman in the DC universe that's a bit lighter in its tone and its story, where Batman v Superman is a bit dark and Justice League has its moments as well. But this is really a really great film that sits within the Superman canon and the mythology and just changing it a little bit and make it more interesting again, refreshing it. Um, like, just making it a very fascinating film. And I think Zack is really good at visual storytelling. And when he's got a good screenwriter behind him, he can accomplish some really great things, I think. Um, there's so much of this film I really love and so much that really is, inspires me and I get a lot out of this. And it sort of harks back to the original film in a lot of ways. Telling the Superman story once again. This isn't a sequel but a, 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 like a remake, reboot of the Superman mythology and storyline where all the other ones had been sequels. And it was sort of a refreshing look at Superman in a different way. Him travelling around is all in the, in the comics as well. And this is something that I've always kind of been really interested in seeing on this big screen is him learning who he is. And I felt there should have been more scenes with him doing that. And there should have been a lot more interaction between him and Kevin Costner's Jonathan Kent. Because um, Costner's really great in this and is to me the perfect casting to play Jonathan Kent who's a very interesting character. And his interactions with Henry Cavill and the younger versions of Clark Kent are really fantastic. And I'd like to have seen a lot more of him within the film um, and a lot more of Clark Kent traveling. And maybe the battle at the end shouldn't have been as massive as it was. And then they did sort of tie that into Batman v Superman, which was the next film on in the canon. And they sort of use that as the beginning of why Batman's against him in Batman v Superman. Look, overall, it's a very fascinating and well-made film. A very interesting film within the Superman universe. I think Henry Cavill's a good choice and does really well here. And I think Zack Schneider's crafted a really interesting and visually spectacular film and he's outdone himself here. Especially with the scenes with Superman flying 
and first learning to fly and breaking the sound barrier, which is brilliant. Anyway, like I said, this is a third review I've done on the Superman films. The next one is Batman v Superman. And with Batman v Superman, I'm going to focus more on the Superman aspects than I am on the Batman aspects, um, just because this is all about Superman and less about Batman. So I'm just going to try and look at his story and what transpires with Batman v Superman, and then obviously go on to do Justice League. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. And if you did, please hit subscribe down the bottom. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.